The film opens with our protagonist, a man named Charlie Matei, who is returning from a pleasant trip with his son, Anatoly. When they make it back to the city, the boy begs Charlie to let him get down from the car and watch a busker perform. Charlie agreed and said he'd be right there after he parks his car. However, just as he exits the vehicle, several masked men corner him and begin shooting at him. One of the masked men even kills a dog that has absolutely nothing to do with whatever their purpose is. Miraculously, he is still alive. While he slowly loses consciousness, he remembers a memory from the past where he was still a young man in prison, who is getting advice from an old mobster, nicknamed Old Timer, about living a life of crime. Old Timer warns him that there is no getting out of the business once he delves in. Back to Charlie, he gets rushed to the hospital, where the doctors are struggling to take out all the 22 bullets lodged in his body. On the other side of this story, we get introduced to a man named Tony Tsakya, who gets informed about Charlie's condition. It is obvious that Tony Tsakya is a powerful and cruel man, which leaves us to wonder if he is the one who hired a crew to get Charlie killed. The news about Charlie's shooting is broadcasted on national TV, and the newscaster mentions that Charlie is a retired mobster. In the next scene, police captain, Marie Goldman, takes interest on the case and decides to visit the crime scene. While Charlie is in surgery, we see another flashback of his past, when young Charlie learns that Old Timer was murdered by his rival. As a result, young Charlie accompanied by his best friends, Tony Tsakia and Kareem, decide to murder a famous mobster named Hernandez for killing their old mentor. The young men swear an oath to remain friends forever before they set off, and take vengeance on Hernandez. They manage to exact vengeance, and it is at this point that their journey into the Mafia world begins. Back in present time, police captain Marie Goldman faces her superior, who advises her to lay off this case because Charlie is a former mobster, and therefore the police should just let them kill each other. Marie ignores him and remains determined to investigate the case, because by doing so she might also find whoever's responsible for killing her husband. She then goes to visit Charlie in the hospital and begins questioning him. But for some reason, Charlie remains tight-lipped. She exits the room in frustration, when Charlie's lawyer Martin walks in, along with Charlie's trusted friends, Kareem and Pat. At night, Captain Marie is tucking her son into bed, when she receives an ominous phone call. She spends the rest of her night drinking while grieving her husband's death. Meanwhile, Kareem is visibly upset and resolves to exact vengeance on whoever is responsible. Martin, on the other hand, advises him to be patient and wait until Charlie awakens from his coma. Kareem then tells Martin to look after Charlie and not leave him alone. Back at the hospital, there's a man disguises himself as a medical staff and sneaks into the hospital. He then pulls out his gun, opens the door to Charlie's room and shoots him several times. Hearing the gunshots, the hospital residents rush to the room and find the dead body. However, the patient is not Charlie, as Captain Marie had transferred Charlie to different room prior to the shooting incident. The incident leads Captain Marie to set up a surveillance crew just outside the hospital on the next day. As she watches, Tony Tsakya enters the hospital to visit Charlie. During the visit, Tony expresses his relief that Charlie is still alive. Before leaving, he hands Charlie a greeting card that lets Charlie know that there are surveillance cameras everywhere, and that the police are monitoring him through an ambulance in front of the hospital. Not long after, Kareem and Martin visit Charlie at the hospital, and takes him with them. Seeing this, Marie decides to tail their car. It doesn't take long before Kareem notices that they are being followed, so he begins to speed up. He then asks a favor from a friend to help him out. Now that Mary is no longer following them, Kareem takes the car inside an old warehouse, where one of Tony's men is tied up to a chair. He is palpably terrified, so much so that he ends up pissing his pants. Charlie proceeds to tell him that no harm will come to him as long as he remains cooperative. 
He reveals that he did not partake in the shooting himself, but Tony Tsaki aka Charlie's best friend did send his men after Charlie. Plus, Tony wants Charlie dead for retiring, and leaving Tony to run their drug business on his own, and he is now afraid that Charlie would one day stand in his way. Charlie is confounded to learn all this. Later on, Kareem advises him to go kill Tony as soon as possible, but Charlie is still torn, because Tony is his best friend and he remembers the oath they made when they were young. Kareem relents, and Martin takes Charlie home afterward, where Charlie is greeted fondly by his family. Kareem returns home to his family too, but when he steps out of his apartment that night, Tony's men kidnap him and takes him away. It turns out that the idea of kidnapping Charlie came from the man who was tied in the chair earlier. Of course the tied man's plan to gain Tony's sympathy backfires when he is shot dead. They then cut off one of Kareem's fingers to send to his family as a warning. Charlie who is just minding his own business and going about his day, is deeply shocked and devastated to hear about Kareem's death. He goes to attend the funeral, and witnesses Kareem's family sob in grief. Anger and fury overtake Charlie at the sight, and he is now determined to take vengeance. Before he begins, he asks Pat to take his family to safety. Later that night, we see Tony's men having a festive dinner party as if they do not at all feel any guilt after torturing a man to death the other night. But their celebration is about to be cut short, because Charlie is now a certified party pooper. <laughs> Now that the men are unarmed, Charlie gives them one last chance to say goodbye to their loved ones, because it won't be long before they're all dead. He then proceeds to shoot one of them, who he knows for a fact is one of the men who shot him because he recognizes the watch he wears on his wrist. With nothing but the sheer power of intimidation, Charlie walks away scot-free while the rest of the men cower in fear. On the next day, Another one of Tony's men is visiting the dead crew's grave, right when Charlie arrives and kills him. Realizing that Charlie is now out for blood, Tony sent his men to ransack Charlie's home and attempt to find Charlie and his family. Luckily, they cannot seem to find anything. While this is going on, Charlie is chilling with his trusty cat on the other side of town. Martin the lawyer arrives at Charlie's house to find it in complete disarray. He then rushes to inform Charlie about this. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to him, one of Tony's men follows him to Charlie's hideout. And it does not take long before the two are surrounded. Badass Charlie holds them off while Martin tries to make his escape via boat. But one of Tony's men catches Martin and corners him. In the end, Charlie makes an escape with his motorcycle, while Tony's men go after him. Because he rammed into a police car, he gets taken right back to the police's hands, which reunites him with Captain Marie Goldman. In the interrogation room, Marie reveals to him a shocking information from her investigation, which is that she found a series of bullets lodged into a wall on the crime scene. In other words, out of the five shooters, one of them did not wish to kill Charlie at all. Moreover, Marie decides to not arrest Charlie for now, because she is convinced that Tony Tsaki is behind her husband's murder. Later that night, Tony Tsaki is seen celebrating his daughter's wedding. Unbeknownst to him, Charlie is right outside his house, and manages to apprehend one of his men. Before finishing him off, Charlie demands him to hand over every data containing Tony Tsaki's current drug transactions. <laughs> Charlie, 
Et pour ce que tu es chiant, fais à Karim, j'y arrive pas. Non When Tony learns about what happened not long after, he becomes furious. He leaves the party and visits his drug lab, where he finally unleashes his rage. Tony has now lost his patience. He tells his goons to capture Charlie dead or alive. On the next morning, Pat goes to pick up Charlie's children Anatoly and Eva from school. It looks like a typical day, until a van pulls up next to them. The men kidnap Anatoly and Eva before driving away. Marie then arrives at the scene but finds that she is too late. Not long after, it is revealed that the police found Eva and take her into the precinct. The beaten and bruised Eva tells them that little Anatoly is going to get killed, unless Charlie turns himself in. When Captain Marie is exiting the precinct later, Charlie suddenly steps into the car with her. He asks her to help him create a fake scenario on the news that claims that Charlie has been arrested, so that hopefully Tony would stop looking for him and release his son. Charlie even promises that he would turn himself in, once his son gets returned. Marie agrees to cooperate. However, when Tony hears the news of Charlie's arrest, he only gets more upset. He sends one of his goons to kill Anatoly right away, because there is no use keeping him now. Unbeknownst to this goon, Charlie is tailing him with a motorcycle to the location where Anatoly is held captive. Inside this house, another one of Tony's men is keeping watch of Anatoly. He immediately gets told to kill Anatoly right now. However, instead of doing as he's told, he then rushes to release Anatoly, but then, while this is going on, Charlie is still outside. It appears that he is caught in barbed wire, and is desperately trying to free himself. The goon carries Anatoly outside and shoves him into the trunk, and begins to drive away, right when this happens. Charlie manages to beat him up, and carries Anatoly away. When Charlie finally makes it home, he tells his wife that they no longer need to hide, because he has gotten rid of all of Tony's goons. On the next day, Tony relaxing in his house, right when Charlie shows up. Despite everything that has happened, it turns out Charlie is willing to put everything behind them for the sake of their friendship. Even though Charlie doesn't want to kill Tony, Tony, who is now power hungry is still determined to get rid of Charlie. Tony pins him to the ground and presses a gun to his face. When Tony is caught off guard, Charlie takes the opportunity to gain the upper hand. The police arrive just in time and proceed to arrest Tony for running a drug ring. It turns out that Charlie has helped Captain Marie procure enough evidence to prove that Tony is guilty of being a drug lord. When Charlie gets questioned by the police later, as it turns out the police are somehow unable to find any evidence that proves his involvement in any drug trade, so they have no choice but to release him. Outside the precinct, he is greeted by Martin, and promptly asks Martin to take them to the parking lot wherein he was shot. Once they arrive, we learn that the one shooter who aimed at the wall at the time was Martin. Feeling betrayed, Charlie points his gun at Martin, but Martin proceeds to plead his case, by saying that Tony merely sent him to kill someone but never specified who. He said that he was shocked when he found out it was Charlie he was sent to kill, and he couldn't go through with it. <laughs> it turns out that Charlie symbolically fired several bullets at the wall, out of appreciation for what Martin had done for him. The last scene shows Charlie and his family having fun at the beach, and they happily walk off into the sunset. And this is where the film ends. <laughs>